And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're going to be taking a look at a very anticipated game, Magic the Gathering, Arena of the Planeswalkers. This is the Magic the Gathering board game that is based on an older game called HeroScape, but has a different feel to it with some Magic the Gathering thrown in. Now I'm gonna review this two ways. In this video, if you've never played HeroScape before, or you just wanna know how the game is played, this is the video to watch. If you are a HeroScape fan, then you're gonna to wanna to watch another video where I talk about the differences. But here I'm just gonna look at this as a game that you can go and buy off the shelf. Here we go. Now each player is going to choose a Planeswalker. There are three cards, the Planeswalker card and then two of their units, two squad creatures. The Planeswalker themselves is a painted miniature, which is a pretty decently painted miniature. I mean, it's not like super quality painted, but certainly better than something I can do. And then they come with two squads. Now these squads are not painted. There's three figures in each squad. So for example, uh, this Planeswalker uh, comes with a squad of Phoenixes and a squad of Firecats. Now you're gonna get these big oversized cards. These are like twice as high as a normal card. Each of these cards tells you the stats of the different creatures. So you can see here, for example, these creatures have one life each, while the, the Planeswalker here has six life. They can move six, both of them. She has a range of five, they have a range of one. She rolls three dice when attacking and four dice when defending, they roll two and one. They also both have special abilities that are on the cards themselves. And so each player is going to pick one of these. They're going to get these three cards. They're going to get the squads. They're also going to get a small deck of cards that matches their color of magic. For example, this is the red color. Players are then going to build the board. Now the board comes in these large pieces here, which on the flip side show you the different um, planeswalkers and talk a little bit about them, which is kind of odd because it seems like they could have put the other more terrain on the back. However, if there was terrain on the back, it wouldn't fit with the front just because of the way these are jagged. Uh, these fit together like puzzle pieces, and so you can make up your own terrain, or you can follow uh, something that's in the book. The, the game also comes with some small terrain pieces, which can be placed on a board in various ways. These pieces fit together like this. There's, there's uh, just a couple of each of these pieces, so you have a bit of a 3D effect. The game also comes with some 3D boards here. These slide together like this. You can place them pretty much wherever you want. And what they do is if a figure cannot fit into a hex, so I can't go here, then the figure can't go there. So these basically block both line of sight and the ability to put a figure in a hex. So once you've built your board or copied one from the scenario booklet, each player is gonna take their planeswalker and place it on a starting space, which is usually on the outside of the board. On a player's turn, they're going to, you're going to start with three cards from their magic deck. And the first thing they'll do is they'll draw an additional card. You have a hand limit of seven cards and you can play up to three cards per turn. We'll talk a little bit more about those. But then they're going to pick one of their units to move. So they'll look through their three cards. At the beginning, obviously, the only one you can move is your planeswalker. Now before you move with your planeswalker, you can summon up to two groups of units, which is all you have. And they could be summoned up to five spaces away from you. And so I could maybe summon these guys like this, and I could summon everything. But I might not choose to summon everything on the first turn, because I might want to move and summon them closer to the enemy, or hold one in reserve and summon it later on. After you summon, you can then move your planeswalker and attack with him. Or once you have summoned, you can pick one of these guys, and you can move with them and attack with them. Each of the different units has special abilities and things, but they're likely going to be moving, trying to get within range of an enemy and attacking them. When you are next to an enemy, or close enough so that they're within your range to attack them, you're going to be using the attack dice that come with the game. You're going to roll, let's say I have five attack dice, so I roll. Here I have rolled four hits, that's what the swords mean, four hits. My opponent might have four defense, so they'll roll four dice. They've rolled three shields. The shields will block three of those hits, so one damage gets through. 
The game comes with little damage tokens that you can place on the base of creatures. Once they've taken enough damage, they're removed from the game. There are shields on two sides of the dice, swords on three sides, and a blank side on the sixth side of the dice. There are also glyphs on the board. Sometimes these are revealed at the beginning of the game. Sometimes they're hidden. Either way, when you move on it, you reveal it if it hasn't been. And as long as you have a figure on that, you will get a bonus as, the, as long as you keep the figure on it. So this one here adds to your toughness, your defense. Your whole army gets plus one to defense. Or your whole army might get a plus one to attack. Or your whole army might get a plus two to movement. And a fourth glyph, if you find this one, you remove the glyph from the board, but you get to draw a magic card immediately. As creatures move on the board, they spend one movement point to move into each space. If they move into water, they must stop. Uh, if they leave water, that's fine. If they go to a higher level, they have to pay one for each level they go up. So here, this guy, this could cost one movement point. This would cost two movement points, then two more. So that's five that they've moved. If they were here and went up, that would cost three. And so, you know, there's creatures who can avoid this with flying, and there's creatures with double bases who will have different rules that they have to uh, follow as they move around. But players are going to, you can move, when you activate a unit, you can move all the pieces in that unit, you can attack with all of them, and then it goes to the next person's turn. When units take enough wounds on them so that it reaches their, their wounds, their life, they are off out of the game, basically. You can't bring them back, you can't summon them again. And when someone's planeswalker is killed, then the other planeswalker wins the battle immediately. You can play two planeswalkers on two or even have some sort of multi-battle. But the whole object is to kill your opponent's planeswalker. Killing the creature stops the creatures from doing damage. But it's killing the planeswalker that wins you the game. All right, let's take a quick look at the five different colors. Chandra here from the red is a pretty interesting because they are the only planeswalker who can attack twice. They can also basically do one damage to something that's within six, six away. They do have the weakest units. However, the Phoenix units have a chance to come back. Whenever you play a red sorcery card um, and you have at least one of these Phoenixes on the board, you can bring back another. They can also fly. And the Firecats, when you summon a Firecats, you can immediately attack with them, which is a very, you know, kind of gets them out there very quickly. And they can get extra hits when they roll the swords. The green planeswalker, green creatures that are within four spaces, if they get plus two range, so basically for these archers, and at the end of her turn, she can run three spaces. The same can be done with these archers, which is one of the few units that have a ranged attack besides the planeswalker. And then these guys have trample, which means if they kill a unit next to them and they have extra damage and there's someone else adjacent, they can deal the extra damage onto that person. They're also kind of tough and powerful. Jace for the blue guys has these uh, ley line phantoms, which looks like they're going boogity boogity the whole time. But they can move through other figures. Normally figures cannot move through other people and they can't be attacked when leaving engagement. In this game, if you're next to somebody, you are engaged with that person. If you move away, they get to roll one die and if they roll a hit, it hits you automatically. Uh, so these guys don't have to worry about that. They also have some of the best defense in the game. These illusionary projections are cool because Jace has the ability to switch with them at the beginning of the turn. So you can spread them out and he can move. Other than that, they're, they're slightly weak, but they're good for getting him all over the board. Uh, he himself can actually take control of an opponent's mage. The game comes with a 20-sided die. Actually, it's a life counter. But a 20-sided die that uh, you can roll. And if he rolls a 16 or higher, when he's four spaces within another planeswalker, he can take control of them and make them move and attack. He can also look at the top card of his library, the deck of cards, to see what it is each turn. The white faction is all about hand-to-hand -hand combat, led by Gideon, who is very strong. He doesn't have any ranged attack, but he can run up there. He gets extra attack based on the number of figures he's fighting. When he defends, if he rolls extra shields over the amount of hits he's taken, they hit your opponent. He also comes with these hook masters here who basically, when they show up, you can pick an opponent's squad that can't move next turn, so you can slow them down. And then rhinos, it's always good to have rhinos in the game. And they get plus one shield for each other rhino that's next to them, and they also have trample. Then finally, we have the color of death. Now, they're powerful because they, the zombies, for example, are pretty weak, but with they're all dead, you can roll that 20-sided die again, you get a 12 or higher, they come back. You also have the Reavers. Anyone who's not a zombie, who's within two spaces of them, get two less defense. And then you have the Necromancer, who 
she gives plus one to all zombies. They get plus one deal. And she can just basically kill somebody who has one or more damage markers that's within six spaces of her. She's very deadly. Now each player has a library of cards. Remember you get three of these at the beginning of your turn and you're going to be able to play these. There are two types of cards in this game. There are sorceries and you can play those and those will do something. For example this one, destroy a creature you control that's adjacent to a target creature. And opponent controls, you do four damage to that creature. Um, others are enchantment. This one here enchants a squad. It tells you what kind of squad. In this instance, it's a unique squad. And it's a hidden enchant, which means you put it on the squad, and when something happens that triggers it, you reveal it. And in this case, you flip this one over. When a creature in an enchanted squad is attacked by a figure, the attacking player discards a card at random. Then you get rid of this card. Other cards are enchant cards that you just play face up. And there are cards that enchant squads, and there's also cards that will enchant planeswalkers, like this one here. This one gives the Enchanted Planeswalker minus one. So I can play this on someone else's Planeswalker, and now they have one less attack when fighting me. Each of the decks gives the color kind of a, its own flavor. You already seen the black ones where they bring dead things back and cause the massive damage. The blue one does stuff to your opponent that just annoys them. Like here you can cancel a sorcery card that they played. Or um, you can move an enchant to somebody else. Or play a card from someone else's grave. The white ones are all about helping you out. This one here gives your squad plus one attack and plus one defense. Uh, this one it does another similar thing to that. Are all creatures within eight clear spaces of a white planeswalker get plus two attack? But you also, you know, th there's a healing, which you would come to think of being in the white deck. The green ones can cause damage and basically make you bigger and stronger. Here, this one gives one a plus three attack until the end of the turn, or plus two range and plus one attack or gives them a plus three to move. While the red will just do some straight up damage, do three damage to somebody else, or do two damage to two different targets. Or, you know, there's, they also can enchant squads and add to them. And so each of these decks is something different. And if you'll notice at the very bottom of a deck, there's a number here, because if you buy multiple sets or expansions, which aren't out yet, you'll be able to build your own deck and your deck will have a point limit. You'll also be able to build your own uh, team, and again, you'll use points. Like this game talks about a 500 point deck uh, army, and so it knows that she costs 325 plus these guys for 115 plus these guys for 60, and that is exactly 500. Um, and then you would come up with a, a deck here of cards that was a certain point limit. You can play bigger point limits or smaller point limits, but out of the out of the box itself, you can just play with, with everything from one color. So what do I think here of Magic the Gathering, Arena of the Planeswalkers? And the fact is that I enjoy it very much with a caveat that I'll get to in a bit. First of all, I really enjoy the quick pace of the game. You literally can set the game up, pull out two Planeswalkers, and fight against each other in probably 20 to 30 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer if you take some time thinking over your moves but it's very quick and I really enjoy how fast that is. Now that will probably slow down when you have to build decks and stuff, but as it is, you can just grab them. Are the different colors balanced? So far it feels like that. It does feel like maybe certain colors might do well against others. For example, it seemed like black was able to just pile drive blue and blue was able to beat up green a little bit more. I'm not sure if it felt a little bit cyclical in that matter and I don't mind that. I think where the game really shines was the two-on-two -two battles because it's fun because you're working together and talking and, and, and just saying, okay, well, you send your guys up there. The summoning aspect is a very simple thing, but I enjoy it. Do you summon on the first turn so you have more options or do you wait to get closer? Or do you wait till you get really close? Maybe hold them back and take punishment one of your squads and then suddenly bring out a fresh squad later on. Now the game is all going to be about card play and dice rolling. Dice rolling is luck. Obviously, the luck will be mitigated by the special abilities and by, you know, making sure that you're rolling more dice than your opponent. But there is a luck aspect. But because the game is short, I don't see that being a problem. Card play is I, I enjoy because at first I think you play cards as quickly as you can. But you have to realize playing the right card at the right time is critical in this game. Playing those hidden enchantments on the right characters, seeing someone else has a hidden enchantment, and then saying, okay, how are we going to deal with that? Is, is really intriguing, and I think it gets even more intriguing as you learn how each squad works. Now, I played with all five colors, and I played against all five colors, and I actually like them all. I think I might like the black the best, and may, oh, I don't know, but I would gladly play with any of them. 
Uh, the, the gameplay is very simple. The rolling of dice, the terrain uh, is easy to set up. The artwork, I think, is really well done. And I think a lot of people are going to have fun with this game. But, and this is my caveat, the game is certainly set up for expansions. When you do it, you're like, ooh, there's deck building? Well, not really, because when you build armies, you can only have one of each unique thing in your squad. Every squad in this game is unique at this point. And so what that means is even if you buy multiple sets of this, you technically aren't supposed to build armies with multiple uniques. Now I will, who cares? This is the same thing that HeroScape did when it first came out, but um, they are promising more and more expansions and wow, that's gonna be fun and interesting to see different builds that you can build. But I'm really kind of surprised that they weren't launched at the same time as the base game because the base game really wants those expansions to be all that it can be. But at the same time, if it doesn't do well without them, they may never show up. So for me right now, this is an incredibly solid game. I had a lot of fun playing it and I'm certainly willing and eager to play it again. But if expansions don't come out for it so that I can do some building, I could see myself getting wearisome of seeing the same combos all the time uh, probably within a year. So if more expansions come out, this could easily become one of my favorite games I've ever played. At this point though, I'm enjoying it a lot. And um, you can watch a live play on our channel that we'll be putting up on Wednesday to see how the gameplay works. Um, and, and, I, and it's a lot of fun. And I think it's a good successor to HeroScape. And if you like HeroScape, I think you'll like this. If you like magic, you might like this. There's more of a difference between those, but it's a cool theme. There's a ton of things that they can pull from. So bring on more stuff, more cards, more units. And I will gladly say this is one of the best games I've ever played. But as for now, even without all that extra stuff for the price point, it is a great, fun, fast game. And if you get a chance to play two and two, that's the ultimate way to try it out. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent. And it could get even better. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Mach die Tür zu! Boop. Boop.